Hello everybody, it's Suzanne here. Thanks for joining me for my paper pumpkin alternative video. So this is a paper pumpkin. It's a box that comes to you once a month. It has an ink spot and a stamp set, the instructions, and then a whole lot of stuff in order to make the projects that are dictated in the instructions. So today we had envelopes and um, or pumpkin pie, orange cardstock that's sort of corrugated, and these really cool um, sort of see through y card fronts. And the directions suggest that you take one of these stickers and plunk it into the uh, on the card, and then use the stamp set to wish the recipient a happy birthday or a happy Father's Day or what have you. So um, I am just using my Knight of Navy ink pad, just a the larger one because I like to use the smaller ones for when I travel so I'm squirreling that away. And this is the acrylic block that you get with the paper pumpkin as well. So you can see that I've just added the glue dots to the back and then I'm going to use these enamel stars. And when I actually lifted it up with my paper piercer, I noticed that I sort of scratched the underneath. So do be careful when you're using these. Um, I sort of bent the plastic back and then added the little star. So that is the example that the paper pumpkin um, shows you. And then this was the other example, pretty much the same thing. These cards come together very quickly if you go by example. And then, you know, today's video is all about the alternatives. So I'm glad you could join me and stick around for a little bit of a longer video because I will be sharing my alternatives on how to play up this card kit. Now I'm not a big fan of the paper, uh, sorry, of I am a big fan of the paper pumpkin. I'm not a big fan of this orange color, pumpkin pie. Like orange is the least favorite color for me. So I did change up the colorway a little bit. So my first card is going to be a shaker card. So I cut that front off my card base and then I'm just using a steel ruler and my craft knife, cutting around the grid there and just making a nice square actually it's a rectangle so and i i wasn't very uh, accurate because <laughs> you know i'm me <laughs> so you look i can you know i ripped a little bit here and there but that's okay because i went in with my scissors and i really trimmed it up nice so it looks nice and flush so i'm taking a piece of i think this was lost lagoon might have been soft. No, I think it's soft sky. Uh, or it could be pool party. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm using the uh, birthday stamp with the Knight of Navy ink because it went really well. And I'm just randomly stamping on this um, little square. So this is slightly bigger than the opening that I cut out. So I'm using my silicone mat and some fast fuse. And fast fuse is a little wider than this little. Um, than these, the, you know, the edges of the paper. So I had to be very careful and uh, try to fold it over on itself. And it, I did get a little sticky. So um, if you're gonna do this, you know, be prepared to get a little glue on you. Okay, so that's my acetate sheet, or you can use just the back of a packaging of a stamp set or something like that, it's fine. It, we just wanna contain some of our um, shaker elements in. So I am using the big, bold, happy. And then this is where the cumbersome part comes from. I'm so glad that Stepping Up is coming out with some um, adhesives for shaker cards. So you can see what I've done here. I've just cut the, I call them the bones. So the edges of the dimensionals and I peeled off one release paper and I stuck another one to it. So they're double strength one right on top of the other and I'm just putting the flat edge down here I'll do it again 
So I have one side that I'm cutting and the other side that I'm cutting, removing the release paper and then taking the whole um, bone off of the dimensional, if I could get it off. And then I'm going to be placing that, the sticky part on the sticky part. I still have the release paper on the top one and pressing that down and then I have double thickness dimensional. So I'm going to put the flat side right to the edge and then I cut off a little bit and then I noticed I had a gap so I just pushed it in so that it would, you want to make it a nice flush close. And then don't forget to put double um, dimensionals on the rest of the card. So that's what I've done here. And then I've added my sequins and I'm taking off the release paper of the dimensional bones. And I'm going to add that randomly stamped birthday piece right over top of that just to cover it. And it's okay if the dimensional foam, you know, sticks out a little bit, that's fine. Now I'm using Fast Fuse and I'm definitely giving a good coating here on all four sides. And then I adhered it to just a Whisper White heavy cardstock. I added some of those um, enamel stars and that is my first alternative, a shaker card. So I was looking at the pumpkin and I realized that they, the way that they had the stickers was awesome. So I pulled out the happy sticker negative part. And on this particular one, I didn't use enough of the uh, embossing buddy powder. And I really should have coated it. And I did that with the pink one, but not so much with the blue one. So you'll see that I'm on the, especially on these little pieces, I'm sort of sticking them on my finger and on my hand to tr try to remove the stickiness of it, neutralize it almost. But um, yeah, it was a little sticky and it got caught up. But anyway, so I put all the negative pieces in and then I used my stump sponge dauber. I'm using soft sky, um, mint macaron and pear pizzazz. So three of my favorite sort of bluey greens. Well, and pear pizzazz is a green, but it goes nicely with mint macaron very well. So I'm just using my dauber in there and because I, yeah, the, this sticker really got stuck on my paper. So I was able to go in and in a circular motion, uh, dab onto the, um, the paper but with the red one I noticed I had to tap okay so here we go you can see oh I'm trying to and it's ripping the paper I'll try the other edge okay not so great either okay so here's my big tip any adhesive you want to be removed take your heat gun to it so I am propping okay so now this is embarrassing but I'm propping this heat gun up against my chest so that the heat part will actually hit the card and start to melt that adhesive and yep my fingers did get a little toasty but it's okay and you can see it's coming see ouch ouch <laughs> it's coming it's coming the other one I put way more embossing buddy on there we go so here's my oh so awesome reveal everyone well you know I make mistakes too and <laughs> obviously I thought this was a fantastic idea and I really didn't want to mess up my work so I've, this works at every time. If I get fast fuse on something, if I heat it up, it's good to go. So just in case you didn't know that, this is a really good tip. Didn't warp the card too much, but I did put it on a piece of, I think that was soft sky. And uh, just a little bit of a, what, like 1 16th border. Here I'm using the birthday on black cardstock with white embossing powder, snipping off the edge. I have a little bit of dimensional on top of that. This is how I make my little um, silver thread nest, wrap it around my hand, put a little daub of 
fast fuse in the background and then pick up the edges and place them nicely together and then trap everything underneath um, my sentiment with the dimensionals and then I'm going to adhere that all to another whisper white card base as well just using dimensionals because it didn't actually work too badly so I wanted a, this to be a little bit popped up and I quite like the look of this card and I think it could be for a guy or a girl, depending. I am going to use some of those enamel um, stars, but first I'm going over all the happies that I could see with my Wink of Stella. Cause you know, I think it's important for us to put a little bit of glimmer, even if it's a guy. Okay, so here I am making sure that I'm lifting off the plastic and not scraping under that little, um, you'll see what I mean if you play with these. It's almost got a like a backing under it. Okay, so there's the pink one. That was with pink pirouette and uh, sweet sugar plum and perfect plum. Okay, so this was um, the more of the Father's Day card. So I did, this was the one and only time I actually used that pumpkin pie corrugated cardboard piece. And then I'm just using um, a little bit of pattern paper from my stash and I'm adhering it. And then, okay, so remember that first piece from the um, shaker card? Well, here I'm taking some crushed curry on a dauber and then I realized, okay, that it's taking too long. I'm just going <laughs> to ink to direct to paper right here. <laughs> oh boy. You know, and this is how we get inky, right? Okay. So I'm cutting off just bits and pieces. I wanted it to sort of look random and cleaned up just to add a sort of a splashy kind of effect. And then I'm taking my archival black ink and my dauber and I am coloring in one of those happies. So with this happy, I ended up putting it on my silicone mat, smashing my uh, Versamark ink pad on it, then sprinkling a whole bunch of clear embossing powder, heat setting that. Then I use my fine tip glue to adhere down the crushed curry piece, putting my happy that is now embossed um, just for placement so I could put that stamp that Father's Day. And then um, I, I took a whole bunch of little bones and I, you know, adhered them to the back of the happy. So the happy is popped up. So it adds a little bit of fun. And then I use my fine tip glue pen like I would my crystal effects or glossy accents you might be familiar with and it was a little runny so I did go in with my crystal effects and sort of fill in some of the bits and pieces the fine tip glue pen dries quite shiny and unless you want the shine there it can be a little bit upsetting if you go over but if you're careful it will sort of work like crystal effects Okay, so I'm using some enamel dots and um, just in that crushed curry, kind of using it up. And of course, I am careful to put fast fuse on my card base and then adhering my card front to that. So because all the glue takes a while to dry. And that's my Father's Day card. And this is the last card that I'm going to share with you today. Um, it is just using some of the leftover happies. So I just alternated the block letters and the scripty letter happy, adhered them down. It's kind of nice on a piece of, um, of the Soft Sky cardstock. I'm using a white, Whisper White um, card base for this. I quite like this. It was just really simple. You could have put a little black piece um, on there saying birthday, but some, you know, I mean, if you got a lot of happies, you pretty much know it's for somebody's birthday. Or just you know to wish them a happy day who knows um, okay so what I ended up doing here uh, was um, of course putting those little stickers uh, those enamel stars on and then I took my wink of Stella and colored over all of the happies and 
this actually added some brilliance to the words because it's tone on tone so it does give a little bit of pop to these and I think I needed just a little bit more so I did go in with my crystal effects and I um, coated all the happy so they're all shiny and yeah so I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing here because it did take me a bit of time just let it dry for I let it dry overnight and it was good to go so um, that is the last card that I'm going to share with you I have two more at the end of the video and it's basically just replacing the backing one was with designer series paper and the other was with a glitter cardstock so thanks so much for joining me I'll see you next month with a paper pumpkin alternative bye mm -hmm.